Welcome back to Fair and Friends Friday. I'm Karen Waltuck, the horticulturist from the Beatrix Fair and Garden Association in Hyde Park, New York. We're located on the grounds of the home of FDR National Historic Site, which is currently closed to the public due to the coronavirus. While we're closed, we're going to release a video every Friday that's discussing a little bit about gardens and gardening. So if you have any questions or suggestions about things you'd like to learn about, feel free to drop us an email at info at beatrixfairandgardenhydepark.org. This week I thought it would be interesting to learn a little bit about the greenhouses that are on the site of the FDR home. We're going to talk with Susan McCavery, horticulturist for the National Park Service, about these historic greenhouses. We were lucky enough this winter to be invited to grow some perennials, annuals, and biennials for the Beatrix Fair and Garden, and it's been an incredible resource and we're very excited to use it. So let's go inside and learn a little bit more about what the greenhouses are all about. Hi, I'm Susan McCavery. I'm a horticulturist at, for the National Park Service at the home of Franklin D. Roosevelt National Historic Site in Hyde Park. Um, I'm with you here at our greenhouse today, and we're very fortunate to have this, this building, this historic building to work in uh, to start our plants for the gardens here at the Roosevelt Estate, as well as helping out some of our partner groups in the park as well. So we're starting in my favorite little spot in the greenhouse. This we, we call the germination room. It's a really nice uh, climate controlled environment that's really great for starting seedlings. We have a bench here that's located over the top of our heating pipes. Just underneath here are the uh, pipes with heat. And then over the top of that are these uh, clay tiles which help to distribute that heat very evenly across the surface of this table. And that's really ideal for starting seeds, that they have a very uh, well distributed, even source of heat from the bottom. Um, warms up the soil and then the seeds are able to germinate very quickly and very evenly in this kind of an environment. It's also, um, we have a, a wall here to the south so that we're facing north here so it doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight. It's a little bit protected from real direct sun in here, which is also ideal and helps to keep things from drying out too quickly. So some of the things that we start from, we start a lot of things from seed in here, both vegetables and flowers, and we use different types of containers and techniques for starting seeds. We do uh, sometimes use, for a few things, these row trays, and I don't have a good example to show you because I just transplanted all of our tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants that uh, were grown in these out, but you'll see the, the end result out in the greenhouse here. But these are very shallow trays, only about an inch deep, and uh, very narrow rows so that I can start a bunch of different varieties of things all at the same time in a tray like this and then just scoop them out, separate out the roots and transplant them then into another kind of a container. So this gives pretty quick germination because it is such a shallow, um, shallow soil volume here that it, that bottom heat really penetrates very quickly and helps the seeds to germinate very quickly and evenly again. Um, so it gives us very quick germination in a very small volume of soil. The other way that we start a lot of our seeds is in market packs. These are, we call them market packs sometimes. They're also known a trade name as pen packs. They can be a little hard to find, but you can also use an old strawberry box. It um, works perfectly, just as well as this. If you don't have this kind of a container, you can just uh, either cut the top off of a strawberry box or even better yet start them in the strawberry pots with that plastic vented lid on because that's actually going to hold moisture in around the seedlings and and be a really great um, environment for seedlings to start with the lid on the strawberry box and then you just have to make sure you take that lid off as soon as anything germinates in them. We also sometimes start seeds directly in some of these cell trays this particular tray has 51 cells and they're quite small. I started some basil here on the 24th of April and I try really hard to do one seed per cell for the most part. Occasionally you can see I drop two. Um, and then at the corner cell, what I try to do is start a whole bunch of seeds. That way if I have a cell that doesn't germinate, I can then transplant out to fill this tray up. Uh, my preferred method where it's possible is to start in a market pack like this and then scoop the seedlings out. Now I can just pick and choose just the strongest seedlings to transplant into a container like this. And you'll see when we move out into the greenhouse, many, many of the things that we've started, we started in market packs or in the low trays like this, and then just transplanted the very best seedlings into this container. 
Some other plants we start directly into big pots because they're big seeds to start with. This is really fun here. These are peanuts. We're going to be growing in our small space gardening exhibit this year, a variety called Tennessee Red Valencia. So these came uh, in a seed pack, but in their shells. So Anna took the sh them out of their shells and planted one peanut per pot for the most part in these pots. And you can see they've germinated beautifully. And we're going to have some beautiful potted plants that are going to go out into the straw bale exhibit in our small space gardening area in the home garden. So that's kind of fun. And then we also have some nasturtiums, which are really fun, big leaves. These are two seeds in each pot. And then okra. We haven't grown okra here yet, but the Roosevelt's did grow okra in their garden. And then we have a variety. This is Jing Orange, which is going to be in the small space gardening exhibit. And then a dwarf green long pod, which was much more similar to the old fashioned variety that was grown by the Roosevelt's. And we're going to be growing that this year too. So if you've never grown okra before, um, even if you're not a fan of the vegetable, it's a great one to grow just for ornamental reasons. It has a beautiful big hibiscus-like flower and gorgeous um, finger-like foliage. It's, it's really a lovely plant. So it has um, both culinary and ornamental value. So a neat one to grow. Okay, so here we have some of the plants that were germinated in the germination room and they're ready for transplanting. This is a variety of purple basil that we're growing for the small space gardening exhibit. Very pretty color foliage here. And then just a few fun things to point out along the way. We're starting some castor beans for going out at the grave site this year. So really fun, great big seed, great big seed leaves. The tree, true leaves are just starting here, but these are another one that we started directly in the pots. And then we have just a variety of different ornamentals here. I'm going to show you a hibiscus that we started from seed here. This is hibiscus mahogany splendor. And it does flower, but usually not right away. Um, and it's really not grown so much for the flowers as it is for this really gorgeous foliage. It looks a lot like a, um, like a Japanese maple foliage, but very pretty foliage plant here that will be out in the the um at the grave site this year and we also did some from cuttings that i'll show you as we get into the next uh next greenhouse and that just tells you that we can start seeds or we can start plants from different methods and certainly planting seeds is one and the other method that we use quite frequently is to take cuttings from a larger plant and then root those cuttings and plant them as individual plants in the garden so these are hibiscus mahogany splendor that were started from seed this year and you can see that they still have their little seed leaves on here and then there's true leaves now they've grown quite a few true leaves but they're really filling out these pots beautifully a lot of roots already growing through the bottom of the pot these are really ready to move up to a larger size pot before they go out into the garden here but i also wanted to show you that we had just one plant out in the garden last year and we decided it would be a fun project to take cuttings of this plant so we had several long stems of the hibiscus last year and we cut off pieces of the stems and removed the lower leaves, made sure that we had a node where the leaf is attached that went down into the soil. We dipped them in a little bit of rooting hormone and um, the plants very quickly rooted into the soil medium that we were starting them in. So these plants actually stayed over the winter here in the greenhouse. They've grown beautifully. Um, we had to battle some aphids on them because whenever you bring things in from out in the garden, that's always one big danger is that you might not just be bringing the plant and you may be bringing some pests along with it. So these plants, these uh, cuttings have been sprayed uh, periodically with insecticidal soap to try to control the aphid problem. That's particularly dangerous in a greenhouse like this where we have so many other plants, we wouldn't want those aphids to spread onto our other plants. So this we only do very cautiously and we have to really watch them carefully to make sure we don't have pest problems that continue. But it's kind of fun to see that you can start this same plant, two different methods, both worked very easily. Um, they grew from seed much more easily than what I had recalled. Um, almost all of our seeds germinated um, or rooting cuttings was also very easy with this plant as well. Behind me are some historic plants that we have here at the site. These are sago palms, which are not truly palms at all. They're cycads in a different family altogether, very ancient kind of a plant, but they were very popular in Roosevelt's era. And Sarah Roosevelt had four of them delivered for her first of, of these that were housed and, and positioned on the porch outside of the mansion, Springwood. 
And um, these are the progeny, these are the, the offspring of Sarah Roosevelt's original four palms. And we're actually working now on rooting more of the little pups off of these so that we have some younger, more uh, uh, better proportioned plants for the size of their containers here to be going out onto the porch next year. So on this bench, we uh, have a lot of the, the vegetable plants that I transplanted out of those long skinny row trays. So there are some eggplants up here. These were the first to come out and you can see how well established they've become in their new containers. And then tomatoes that I went directly from the row tray into a small pot here. And these will grow very quickly and be ready to go out in the garden in just a couple of weeks. And then we've also been potting up uh, some plants into older containers or reusable plastic containers. So here you can see these are just some yogurt containers that were saved. We punched holes in the bottom of them and potted up some of our extra plants, some of our peppers here, which are gonna to go to Duchess Outreach for the community gardens there. So you don't necessarily have to have the same kinds of materials that we have here in the greenhouse. As I mentioned, the strawberry boxes are great for starting seeds and you can always transplant into a container, uh, an old uh, plastic yogurt container or something of a similar size if you don't have commercial pots uh, for you to use at home. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you today is that um, it's lovely to have flowers in the greenhouse. These are a New Guinea impatience, a sun patience, so they'll grow out, even out in full sun for an impatience that can be unusual and kind of a, a good feature. Um, but the flowers are lovely, but flowers are not really what we want to have in a greenhouse where we're really trying to propagate a lot of plants and, and grow a healthy crop of plants. And the reason is that the flowers can attract insects. Sometimes that's good to have insects um, attracted if you're trying to attract pollinators, but it also can attract some of the insect pests like thrips and aphids and white flies. So we really don't wanna have a lot of, of flowers on the plants. The other thing that can happen is as those fly, flowers die and they fall on the surface of the foliage or down into the pot, um, they can start to decay and the fungi that grow on the decaying flowers can then infect the plant and actually cause some disease problems on the plant. So flowers on the plant in the greenhouse in general is not really what we're looking for in a production greenhouse. So we'll take a pair of snips here and actually go in and snip off the flowers. And then if I have time, I'll even take some of these buds so that I don't have to get these as they open up either and it leaves me with a very clean plant. And also the plant now is focusing all of its energy on root and, and leaf production rather than putting a lot of energy into producing flowers. And then the purpose of flowers in the first place is to produce seeds for the plant. So if it's, again, if it's putting energy into seed production, it's less energy that's going into the rest of the plant. So for now, focus is on roots and leaves. Some of the plants we don't start ourselves from seed. We actually get in plugs or containers with little teeny tiny um, cells um, of either seedlings or cuttings that are grown by another grower and then shipped to us. So these are plugs of a profusion apricot zinnia. And you can see they're quite small. There are 288 cells in this tray. So a lot, a lot of plants in a very small size flat. And you can see what the rooted cutting look, or what the rooted uh, seedling looks like here. And there's a lot of roots here. These are really, really ready to get out of these tight quarters and into larger containers. And here you can see where we have potted them up or moved them from this very small size cell into a larger size cell. And this is not their final uh, space here. These will actually be potted up once again. So move to yet another size container, probably the size of this pot or into a larger size container like this, but with bigger holes in it um, to accommodate bigger root volume. And these are all rooted, or these are all um, seedlings of the zinnias here. We also get some rooted cuttings in. We'll move down the, the row here a little ways. And something like these coleus, were actually cuttings taken by a grower and then started in those uh, plug trays. And then again, we've potted them up. In this case, 
there are 24 cells in this tray. And then just behind you over here against the, the glass wall, um, we have some really lovely cannas that are um, for the Vanderbilt Garden Association. A couple of the Vanderbilt gardeners came in, oh gosh, back in March and potted up the tubers that they had saved in their basements from last year's cannas. And now you can see they've grown beautifully in this greenhouse so that they're really um, large plants that are ready to go out into the garden once it's warm enough and we're past all danger of frost. For us, that means at least May 15th. I usually err on a much more conservative side and wait until the very last week of May before I plant something as tender as a canna lily out in the garden. In addition to the greenhouse, we're really fortunate here to have several cold frames. We have one long strip here of cold frames and then another on the other side of the ice house. And these actually um, would have been used historically as hotbeds. So they would have been loaded up with manure and soil so that they stay uh, very warm and then covered with glass um, so that you provide a real early environment for growing melons and other things that really like um, warm temperatures and to be able to start really early when you weren't heating a greenhouse. Um, now we use them as cold frames, which is great because we can use them for hardening off or slowly acclimating our plants out to the outdoors before they go out in the garden. Or uh, we use them also for our cooler weather crops, which um, the greenhouse is way too hot for things like cabbages and Brussels sprouts and Swiss chard. So we're really fortunate to be able to have this secondary environment where we can start the seeds in the greenhouse and then move them very quickly out here into the cold frame. So here you see I have some um, Brussels sprouts that were started in the greenhouse and then moved out to the cold frame about a week ago, but they're really loving this kind of an environment and they're gonna be planted out in the garden probably the end of this week or the beginning of next. Thanks for joining us for Fair and Friends Friday. Once again, if you have any suggestions or questions for things you'd like us to talk about in future episodes, drop us an email at info at Beatrix Fair and Garden, Hyde Park We look forward to hearing from you, and we'll see you next week.